Why do we do what we do? Why do we buy into the products, services, ideas, politics that we do? Those are some of the questions I started asking myself at 16 years old, stalking the nostalgia section at Dylan's Candy Bar, my first job. We had this really neat schematic that told us exactly where the cow tails should go, how the Necco wafers should face, even how loud Willy Wonka should be while it played on loop throughout the day. And all of this was to increase the sales of the candy in the section. However, when the numbers came in, the sales did not correlate with the effort it took to bring customers back to their childhood and incite a need for a candy from their past. Quite disappointed, I asked myself, how could this seemingly genius installation miss the mark by so much? And that question started a decade-long journey that my team and I have taken in using neuropsychology in affecting purchasing behavior. And here is one crucial mistake we have found companies and organizations of all types and sizes to make. Whether a campaign is devised to promote a product, such as a water bottle, or an idea, such as recycling said water bottle, it is too often based on data from faulty research methods that are focus groups and surveys or even worse, our own personal biases. If I like it, so will they. If they drive a Tesla, they must care about the environment. However, focus groups and surveys have a margin of error of over 80%. And that is because our brains make decisions taking into account a multitude of factors within a very short period of time factors that we are unable to accurately verbalize. If we are to make a real impact in the world of sustainability, we must start talking to the decision maker, the brain. And neuromarketing can help us do just that. Neuromarketing is the implementation of neuropsychology in market research, and it measures the brain's direct response to marketing stimuli rather than collecting its inaccurate verbalization. To give you a stark difference between the focus groups and what neuromarketing tests can collect, we have to look no further than my niece's favorite and very messy snack, Cheetos. To lure in a new adult market, they devised a bunch of very mischievous ads as part of their Orange Underground campaign. Some of you may remember them. And one of my favorite ads includes a woman walking into a laundromat holding a bag of Cheetos to find that her laundry had been displaced by another patron to make room for theirs. Annoyed, as she should be, she looked to the side to find Chester, the Cheetos mascot, who told her that the aggressor's white laundry was right to the side of her. She grabs a handful of Cheetos and puts it in the white laundry. Very messy situation. Now, before they re release the ads to the public, like many companies do, they put together focus groups. But Cheetos did an extra thing. They also made those focus groups go through neuromarketing tests, namely EEG brain scans. The focus groups overwhelmingly stated that the ads are mean-spirited, not funny, and detracted from the brand. The EEG scans had a different story to tell. They showed across the board that the parts of the brain responsive to humor and closely related to purchasing behavior lit up. As they say, the proof is in the pudding, or in this case, in a bag of Cheetos. And Cheetos went on to win the 2009 David Ogilvy Award, showing that clearly the ads were quite entertaining and in fact engaging. But most importantly, they captured the target market Cheetos was going after. After all, if you think of Cheetos, 
it is unlikely that you think of it as a snack exclusively for kids. Now, we know that Cheetos has used it to attract a new market. PayPal has used neuromarketing to better understand what their customers truly care about. By the way, it's not security. It's speed and convenience. Hyundai used neuromarketing to make design changes to their cars to improve customer satisfaction and also take in a new customer segment. But can we use neuromarketing to help us with a worldly concern such as extending our stay on Earth? After all, it's not the planet we are fighting for. The planet will be just fine without us. It's our own extinction that we're looking to prevent. And in how bad a shape are we in, really? Well, between September 2020 and February 2021, over 12.5 million people globally were displaced due to the adverse effects of climate change. And on July 29th of 2021, this year, we had already used up all that global resources can sustain in a year. That is the equivalent of using up all your savings and losing your one source of income for four months, having to depend on creditors. Unless you are really good on that repayment plan, it is something that can quickly snowball into a bad situation, possibly to last for generations. And when it comes to sustainability, we are snowballing. And it is likely that generations to come will have to pay for it. Unless we change something. And neuromarketing can be that change. There are three ways so far that we have found neuromarketing to be helpful in solving that for us. Number one, education. We all know that to start change, there must be education. But we often forget that everyone learns in different ways. Neuromarketing can help us better understand how different segments of the population learn in ways that makes them take action. In our ongoing study on the effectiveness of sustainability education, we are so far finding that only about 37% of an educated population segment can accurately connect their micro actions, such as recycling their daily coffee cup, to the macro effects that they have on our environment. Clearly, we have a lot of learning to do. Number two, neuromarketing can also help us better understand how different demographics, different countries even, perceive sustainability and sustainable products. Are there parts of the population that may think that sustainability is a luxury item? Or do people generally believe that their actions do matter and they do make a change? Those are some of the questions that neuromarketing can help us answer more accurately. And number three, we already know that big brands like Cheetos, PayPal, and Hyundai use neuromarketing to improve their products, to attract new customer segments, and so on. But we're not yet doing that for sustainability, and we absolutely should. Should identify truly sustainable products and neuromarketing can help us place them in ways that attract more of the population and gets more people to participate and act on them. I will leave you with this. If we hope to change human behavior about sustainability and ultimately stave off our extinction, we must stop assuming and start listening to the decision maker, the brain, and neuromarketing can help us do so. Thank you.